Okay, so Marvel Legends. In case you're not familiar, uh, of course, we're talking about Marvel Comics characters, uh, superheroes that have been in you know, tons of comic books, and uh, many have made movie appearances as well. Most of the figures that I have are from the comic book versions. And I'm uh, pretty proud of my collection. I think altogether I have about 44, 45 of them. A uh, good selection of heroes as well as villains. Uh, anyway, let's just get to it. So first of all, got to start on the Avengers section here. As you can see, I've got the Incredible Hulk. That particular figure is uh, based off of his early, early comic book appearances. Uh, Incredible Hulk, he's got kind of the Frankenstein look because uh, he's a monster. He's a man that turns into a monster and he looks pretty brutal, pretty vicious. He's uh, like all of the Marvel Legends figures in my collection. He's at the six inch scale, although he stands at about probably about seven, seven and a half at uh, full height. Anyway, yeah, Bruce Banner, aka Hulk. Then of course we got the Mighty Thor. Now this screams back to the 70s and 80s comic book appearances. Um, now check out the wings on his helmet and the old school get up. Uh, of course he's wielding Mjolnir, which um, if you look closely, you can see the uh, inscription on the side there written in Norse runes, I believe. Uh, haven't checked the authenticity on that. Um, yeah, check out those yellow boots, man. Oh, and those big knee pads. I'm not sure what that was going on, or what that was all about, but hey, that was a lot of fun. So you got your Hulk, you got your Thor. Now you got Tony Stark, AKA Iron Man. This I believe would have been from his first movie appearance. Uh, what would be considered the Mark III armor? I, I don't know. Uh, whatever he fought with at the end of the first Iron Man movie, I think that's what this is based off of. Of course, there's a billion different versions of Iron Man with different types of power armor. Um, and this is just one of many, but I kind of like this one because it kind of reminds me a lot of the old comic book appearances, like say uh, around the 70s and 80s, um, leading up to like Secret Wars, Avengers, uh, yeah, I think it's just a nice classic look for him with the sort of updated movie looking mask, which I think is really cool. You got your Black Widow right here. Um, it's kind of a weird, super articulated figure. She's got like 26 points of articulation or something like that. But she's got this weird neck thing going on where her neck like can rotate up and down or like she can nod her head up and down. And um, that's made so you can put her in these crazy poses. Like she comes with a clear base stand so you could like make her like reaching out, doing a ninja kick, something like that. Yeah, she's a pretty cool figure. One of my favorites. Um, from back in the early days of Marvel Legends, I believe, as well as this guy, who we all know as Captain America. I mean, check out those wings. On his, on his helmet there. Now this is pure comic book Captain America. I don't think he ever appeared in the movies quite like this. Um, yeah, this is pretty old school 70s Captain America, 60s or 70s Captain America. Look at the cuffs on those boots. Yeah, there was something about their costumes back in the day in the really old comics that was really exaggerated, but that was just part of how they were drawn. That was how the characters were. Um, yeah, no, Captain America, we could dwell on this guy for hours, but, uh, he's Captain America. You know who he is, Steve Rogers, enough said. Then we got Hawkeye. This is one of my favorite figures that I have actually, uh, because all of these arrows that he's got in his quiver come out and you can, uh, basically, yeah, like see, he's got there's a bunch of different types of arrows. I don't want to take them all out here now because then I'm going to have to, you know, reset the figure and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, he's got a bow, of course, Hawkeye. 
This is what he used to look like back in the day. Looks pretty close to what he looked like in the 70s, uh, 60s and 70s when he was a key member of the Avengers. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, all those arrows have different like arrow tips on them and stuff. Some of them are supposed to be like sleeping gas. Some of them are supposed to be like explosive. Uh, there's even one, and I'm not going to dig it out now, but there's even one that has Ant-Man clinging to the front of the arrow. And if you remember in the scene in it was a Civil War where um, Ant-Man shrinks himself down and he climbs on top of the arrow and Hawkeye shoots the arrow. And uh, that's actually comes from an old comic book cover where the two of them were working together as uh, Avengers. We got your Vision on the left and your Scarlet Witch on the right. These two figures harken back to what they looked like in the late 70s, early 80s, I guess you could say. Um, no, actually it would have been maybe even close to mid 80s when these two had um, a spin-off series, limited series of their own called Vision and the Scarlet Witch. Uh, as you can see, Vision is very primary colors there. Well, green's not really a primary color, but whatever. Um, and the Scarlet Witch had this weird sort of headdress thing. You know, the figure's pretty good. Her costume is a little, uh, I don't know, a little questionable. <laughs> uh, there's her robot husband, and she's, I don't know. Look, Vision, there's something over there. But yeah, Vision and Scarlet Witch. Uh, I think that's a pretty cool set. Uh, I didn't get them together, of course. I bought them individually, but um, it just made sense. They're holding hands. They're, well, they were holding hands. Somebody moved my figures. And, uh, yeah, always together. They're a true love story. You know, the, the, the true odd couple. Yeah, let's see what happens to them in the future. And then you got your Spider-Man. Not going to say a lot about him, but, yeah. Gotta love Spider-Man. Spider-Man's cool. And uh, down here at his feet, I got a little guitar, which fits perfectly in his hand. And I had him pose playing guitar for a while. And, um... This one is the, uh, I think it's about the 2003-2004 movie version, maybe Spider-Man 1 or 2, uh, Tobey Maguire version. But I love the suit on this, it looks very close to what I remember from the comic books. Uh, maybe just not as fantastically bright red and blue, but um, yeah, I really like this figure a lot. He's uh, got tons of articulation. Even his fingers, you can pose his fingers, so you can do the like classic web shooting pose and all that. This one, he's just kind of like, oh yeah, he's totally doing the web shooting pose right there. Uh, next to Spider-Man, we have Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck, of course, the first Marvel character, Marvel Comics character to ever have his own movie, his own for feature length movie. Why they chose Howard the Duck, I will never know. But there he is. Uh, he actually came as a set with the Silver Surfer, uh, which is a weird combination. I don't know why they did that, but yeah. So I like to think of him as his own character, even though he's just, it's not nearly as posable as all the others. Uh, he's much shorter, of course, because he's a duck. And yeah, he, he looks pretty close to like he did in the comics, uh, except he doesn't have a cigar, which, um, you know, at the time, I guess, uh, the makers of the action figures didn't want to promote tobacco use, so yeah, they never included his iconic cigar like he always had in the comic books. Um, yeah, Howard the Duck. Then we got a couple of members of the Fantastic Four right here. I am sadly missing Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman, but you got your Human Torch. You got your Thing, Ben Grimm, the Thing, Fantastic Four. Fantastic Two. They're not as fantastic without the other two. Then the aforementioned Silver Surfer. He's pretty awesome. He's got actually magnetic feet and uh, there's a strip of metal down the middle of his surfboard here. So if I wanted to, uh, he actually came with a stand um, that I can set up so I can put him in various surfing poses and things like that. Um, and even mount him on the wall if I wanted to. But 
I don't do that. Then we got a Winter Soldier. This would be from the uh, Captain America Winter Soldier movie, this version. Uh, yeah, he's got the cool mask on. He's got his submachine gun, of course, which I think actually originally came with Nick Fury, but uh, I don't know. Anyway, he's got the cool metal arm. Bucky, what's happened to you, man? Then we got your Emma Frost, the White Queen. Uh, she's looking pretty sexy in her, um, basically her bikini and uh, white cape. Uh, never a big fan of this character. Uh, apparently she had a lot to do with the Astonishing X-Men series, but didn't read that much of that. Um, you know, she's pretty cool. And Daredevil. Uh, basically looks exactly like she does in the comics. Doesn't look anything like in the Netflix shows. Uh, Daredevil as well. That's his classic comic book appearance. Um... I never did get his uh, weapons with him. He has like a billy club with a retractable grappling hook and stuff like that. Um, yeah, well, they make a nice set, the two of them. Then, uh, Boromir, no, um, Luke Cage. Now, he was always one of my favorite figures. Uh, I just love his appearance. Um, he was always a kick-ass character back in the 70s when he first debuted in his own comic. And sweet Christmas, Luke Cage. Okay, then you got your Ghost Rider. This would be the Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider from the uh, 70s comics. His bike is super sweet. And I just love his flaming skull. And he's uh, pretty poseable. You can take him off the bike, of course. He's not stuck on there. But Ghost Rider without his bike is, pff, well, he's just a ghost, not a rider. Uh, then we got Mystique from the X-Men. Um, now, this is when Mystique was a villain in the comic books. Uh, she was never part of the team when I was reading the comic books back in the 80s. Uh, she was always a great villain, though. Um, yeah, I'm not really a fan of what they did with her, or rather what Jennifer Lawrence did with her in the com in the X-Men movies. It's not that they weren't good movies, it's not that she's not a good actress, it's just they portrayed her in a very, very different way than I thought they should have. I think they actually got it better in the original X-Men movies from like 99 to 2006 or 2005, whenever that was. Anyway, Mystique. Then you got your Wolverine classic Wolverine. Uh, my version has slightly bent claws because I got them secondhand from somebody in China, I think. Because uh, for a while there, this particular figure with the brown suit was very rare, very valuable, and so I just had to settle for a, you know, $10 used version rather than the $70 or $80 that they were asking for for uh, you know him mint and package and I was just gonna take him out of the package anyway so why would I pay all that extra money just for the packaging but yeah Wolverine looks pretty awesome that's around the 1984 85 Wolverine I think maybe earlier maybe 83 um, always my favorite my favorite version of Wolverine uh, then we got Professor X this one is based off of uh, I believe the first X-Men movie. Got this chair, you know. Professor Charles Xavier. You know, pretty detailed, I think. Uh, figure's a little beat up. Uh, I don't know if I can get an angle on it, but his head's kind of scraped up and stuff, but he's been through some shit. Yeah, Professor X. Then we got your She-Hulk. Oh, the She-Hulk. One of my uh, one of my favorite figures that I have, um, just because I love the character. I think she's crazy and cool, and uh, she's actually very prominent in a lot of more recent comic books, which I think is great. And uh, this one, this is basically her first appearance from She-Hulk number one, I believe. Um, yeah, that would have been early '80s, I believe. Then I got 
this version of Nick Fury. Uh, the yeah, the Ultimate Avengers version. Ultimate Avengers, of course, came out a couple of years before the Avengers movie, or even predates the MCU as we know it, the Marvel Comics universe, um, or Marvel Cinematic Universe, rather. Anyway, this version of Nick Fury is pretty badass. Comes with a gun. He's got the eye patch. He's got the. He looks pretty mean. Big trench coat. Cool. And he does kind of look like Samuel L. Jackson, but not not as much as you'd think. He's actually based off the other version. So uh, then I got the Dazzler. The Dazzler. Check out those roller skates. She's got the microphone. Her mutant power is to turn sound into light. How she does that, I don't know. But see, she's got the cool like rainbow lights coming out of her hands and stuff. And um, yeah, a really cool figure off of an obscure 80s character that I uh, always found pretty cheesy. And uh, yeah, she was pretty kick, kick ass. Uh, eventually, I think she joined the X-Men because she is a mutant. And um, yeah, she's pretty cool. Got her pretty cheap, actually, because apparently not a lot of people want a roller skating, disco singing mutant. Um, but I did, so I got it. Then we got Namor, the Submariner. Um, basically the King of Atlantis. Uh, yeah, say what you want about Aquaman, but this guy came first. Sorry to say. Sorry, Aquaman. Um, he's a little bit meaner. <laughs> he's also sort of an anti-hero, sort of a, sometimes a villain, sometimes a good guy. Uh, the base that he came on, well, that's actually not the base that he came with. I basically just bought this figure, a dude in his underwear with pointy ears and wings on his feet. Um, that base that conveniently fits right around him makes it look like he's leaping out of the water actually came with a different version of that same character, uh, which I don't have anymore, but I like the base, so I kept it and then I sold the, the figure itself. Yeah, that's kind of cheating, I know, but whatever. Namor. King of Atlantis, the Submariner. And he always looks pissed off. Must be all that plastic in the ocean. Then we got Thundra. You may not be familiar with her. She's a little obscure, but um, she's basically like I believe she's described as a Femazon. Femazon. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but uh, if you look at her next to Conan, she's like the same size as him. She's like and she's actually crouching down a little bit. Uh, so she's about seven feet tall, super muscular, super strong. She's got super strength, of course. Whips around this ball and chain and kicks ass. And uh, she don't take shit from no man. Nope, that's Thundra. I love her, she's awesome. Also an obscure character and uh, not very expensive to get because not a lot of people wanted her, but hey, I wanted her, she's cool. And Conan, of course. Yeah, Conan the Barbarian, one of, uh, you know, Marvel's more different type of characters. Uh, there was a few crossovers with other, like, superheroes and stuff, but Conan basically exists in his own world, a uh, fantasy world where you don't see Spider-Man and the Hulk rampaging around in the world of Samaria too much. Yeah. But it's an awesome Conan figure. He's got a sweet sword. Um, he's just ripped AF. Like, look at that guy. Yeah, you don't mess with that guy. Conan. Then this figure right here is actually a version of Carol Danvers, better known as Captain Marvel or Miss Marvel. Uh, this version, she actually goes by the name of Warbird. Uh, but she has the same basic powers, Kree powers. She like shoots energy. Uh, she flies. She's super strong. Um, she's got like some kind of psychic sense, that sort of thing. This was, uh, I think, early 2000s version from the comic books. And um, yeah, her name is Warbird. She decided to change her name. Anyway, cool figure. She looks super sexy. And uh, then, of course, we got your Deadpool. 
Now this one isn't the one that came with the uh, tacos and stuff like that, or at least I don't think it is, but it came with a couple of swords. This is um, a more recent version, I think based off of the movie actually. Um, but yeah, he looks pretty awesome. He's got all his gear. Then we got Tigra. Tiger lady. Check it out, she's got a tiger tail. Uh, very feline looking figure. Um, she's got some nasty claws. She's got the tiger stripes, of course, and you know, the bikini complete with like one of those teeth, claws, something like that. Yeah, she's like Jungle Warrior, I guess. Then we got Sasquatch uh, from the Alpha Flight team, Canada's own Avengers. Um, for some reason I put a microphone in his hand because he looks like he's on stage singing for Black Sabbath or something. I don't know. It's Sasquatch Ozzy, I guess. Okay, now we got our villains up here. Starting with the one and only Loki. I love his horns on his helmet and his cool sword that he's got. Um, yeah, this would be kind of his classic comic book appearance um, yeah dating way back to like 70s 80s even 60s Loki's been around forever and he's been just a bastard forever and uh, now with the popularity of his character in the movies um, I think they've changed his character quite a bit but I like it I think it's fun um, this is his more like old-school evil Loki edition then we got your Thanos complete with the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, and he's a pretty huge figure, actually. Even Loki is pretty big. Like, he's supposed to be like six foot five or something like that. And Thanos is even bigger than him. And of course, he's ripped, too. Um, yeah, pretty good, pretty detailed Thanos there. I think I got that just before Infinity War came out. So I don't know if he's based off the movies or more of the comic books, I guess. But uh, looks pretty convincing, pretty cool to me. Then Doctor Doom. Now, I don't know if he can get a real good detail on his face. He's way up there on the shelf. But uh, yeah, he actually comes with a removable mask. And he's got a normal face underneath, which is weird. Because Doctor Doom is supposed to be, like, you know, super scarred and all that stuff. And whatever lab accident forced him to wear the mask all the time he blames on Reed Richards and his whole story arc is vengeance upon the Fantastic Four and the world in general he of course he's a super evil genius um, that carries a gun for whatever reason um, you know, he can shoot lasers out of his hands but he carries a gun hmm okay you, hey, you do Doom, okay? However you have to do it, Doom. You do you. Then we got Batrock the Leaper. Batrock the Leaper. Probably never heard of this guy. Uh, an old Captain America villain. Basically, he's a uh, skilled martial artist. He's a French guy, as you can tell by his uh, amazing mustache that he's got right there. Um, they actually did stick him in the Captain America Winter Soldier movie, but of course he didn't look like that at all which I was a little disappointed with. But if you remember, uh, one of the opening scenes where Captain America uh, basically jumps out of a plane with no parachute and uh, gets aboard a ship, and it's running the ship, the main terrorist that he's fighting against is actually supposed to be this character. Now he was, uh, forgive me if I don't remember his name, Georges St. Pierre? the uh, MMA fighter I think uh, I don't know but you know he had a brief little fight with Captain America there and uh, Captain America punches lights up so yeah that's kind of sad because I always liked this guy from the comics because he was I found him kind of funny actually just like you can't take the guy seriously with that mask and the mustache looks like Daedalus from the old Hercules cartoon if you ask me but, and he has a, like a just outrageous French accent, the way that they printed it in the comics. and uh, Such a shame. Maybe he'll come back to the MCU someday. Probably not. 
Then up there, we got the Abomination. This is way closer to the comic book version of the Abomination, which I really prefer because he looks more like a monster, like a, actually kind of reminds me of like a creature from the Black Lagoon or something like that. Like he is a monster. Um, whereas the other one was just a, the one in the Incredible Hulk movie I thought looked terrible. Uh, just a big lump of like gray flesh and I hated that. I thought it looked terrible. Um, this guy is the real abomination. Then I got the Taskmaster, who has the ability to basically copy any power or any ability that any hero has. Um, anyway, he's got this weird skull mask, always kind of creepy looking. And I always thought he was really cool because it's like, yeah, anything Spider-Man can do, and if he sees him do it, he can do it. Anything Captain America can do, he can do it. The Hawkeye, he can do it. You know, any of that stuff. And so he just kind of shuts down a lot of powers of uh, our superheroes. Um, I always thought he was super cool. Then we got your Mole Man. Classic Fantastic Four villain. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't know much about him. Um, rather short and stocky little guy. And... Uh, yeah, well, basically he lives underground, leader of the mole people, and uh, hates the surface dwellers. That's his gig. Then we got Ultron. This would be the comic book version of Ultron, far superior to the movie version. I uh, actually really hated James Spader as Ultron. Uh, I thought it was totally, they gave him way too much humanity and uh, tried to make him funny. Ultron's not funny, he's a fucking evil robot, wants to take over the world, why the hell would he make jokes? He ain't got time for jokes, only time for world domination. That is Whirlwind, um, yeah, he's a villain that um, creates tornadoes, has tornado powers, rides around on a tornado, uh, he's just basically, usually a thug, kind of works for other villains and things like that. But I thought he was pretty cool. I like his look. Looks like a cactus or a cucumber or something like that. Yeah, he's kind of dumb looking actually, but um, he, I don't know, I thought he, I always thought he was kind of cool in the comics. So yeah, so I got him up there. Well, that is the Red Skull. It comes with the uh, Cosmic Cube. You may recognize that as the Tesseract from the Marvel movies, but uh, I believe in this version came out that was actually supposed to be the Cosmic Cube, which Tesseract is based off of, but is actually quite different in the comics. Um, yeah, he's a former Nazi. Uh, well, I guess he's still probably somewhat of a Nazi since apparently we still have those around too. Um, yeah, he came with a bunch of guns and stuff, came with a sweet trench coat. He actually looks like almost exactly the same uh, body style as Nick Fury over here. As a matter of fact, I think they may have just copied the bodies and switched the heads, but no, there's a little more to it than that, but they use the same basic design. Anyway, I love the Red Skull. Always a good bad guy. Then you got the Absorbing Man. Anything that he touches, he can he can make his body into that substance. And, uh, you know, as it shows here on his figure, uh, his foot is like basically all brick. His, I guess that would be the left side of his body is pretty much turning into like rock or concrete or even steel. Um, and he, of course, he fights with this gigantic wrecking ball. Um, he was a really cool villain in the old... Thor comics um, when um, right around the time when it switched from journey into mystery into the mighty Thor um, yeah I always like the absorbing man then there's this guy Magneto now this is based off the comic book version of course because he looks nothing like either uh, Michael Fassbender or uh, what's his name again Ian McKellen um, but he's got his helmet, his iconic helmet. Uh, this Magneto was always pretty cool in the comic books in that sometimes he was a villain 
and sometimes he was a good guy but he was always very complex had a great backstory and uh, yeah and last and probably least of my Marvel Legends collection is the Rhino I don't even remember where I got this guy from I don't even know if he's an official Marvel Legends figure he's not as posable as some of the others but uh, he's basically he's a dude in a Rhino suit super strong he can like smash his way through walls and things like that he's uh he's kind of dumb but uh he was always good you know spider-man villain i especially remember his uh appearance in the old 60s spider-man cartoon where uh, he's beating the shit out of spider-man and spider-man defeats him with pepper actual black pepper sprinkles in his face makes him sneeze and then fucks him up and spider-man can like web him up and and uh, take him to jail defeated by an ordinary condiment that's got to be a horrible way to go that's my marvel legends collection growing every day well not every day because if i got one a day i'd have millions of them if you like comic books as much as i do if you like action figures as much as i do um hopefully you found this video a little bit enjoyable uh now this is just of course there's far more marvel legends figures out there for me to collect and uh probably as i get new ones maybe i'll you know do a little video showing you which ones i got and what i like about them and stuff like that and um yeah if you enjoy this video uh please uh, hit the like button and you know subscribe to my channel if you want to see stuff like this uh, talking about action figures and toys and games and all that kind of stuff so this is Andy boy signing off and have a good one out there